This is the start of a new repair project and as you can no doubt see this is a mechanical calculator. In recent videos I repaired a couple of Nixie tube calculators. I'm still working on the second one. Uh, incidentally if anyone out there has any Russian MOS logic ICs that you're willing to part with then please uh, contact me because I would like to get that electronica calculator repaired. Now during the repair of those calculators I stated that they operate in a very similar way to mechanical calculators such as this and also some time ago I repaired and restored a Fryden uh, calculator and that operates in a very similar way to the uh, electronica calculator that I showed recently. Uh, the only difference of course is the electronica is electronic and the Fryden is entirely mechanical. Uh, same time mechanical, it was um, motor driven, um, but other than that all the mechanisms for carrying out the calculations uh, were mechanical. And uh, I also showed a second, um, much older mechanical calculator, also motor driven, that again operates in a very similar way to the electronic calculators. So um, we'll go through the repair of this machine and we'll try and point out the similarities um, between the way that the mechanical calculators work and the way that the electronic calculators work. Now one of the things um, you'll come across if you're dealing with calculators like this, and this is a Bulmer's Addo uh, calculator, and um, it was manufactured by the Agrol uh, Machine Company back in the late 1920s or early 1930s. And um, I bought this off eBay, you can see it's seen better days. Fundamentally it seems to be in good condition, but of course it doesn't work, everything's kind of locked up. It's absolutely filthy, needs a really good clean. Um, but one thing you might find um, interesting with this are these three keys at the bottom right of the keyboard. And to understand what these are for, and in fact to understand how to repair these, uh, you really need to understand the purpose these were manufactured for and also the, um, the currency that they were meant to handle. So that of course means that these were really manufactured for financial institutions such as banks and they were meant to uh, allow easy uh, calculations of currency. And there were two basic models that this company made at the time. One was the decimal machine and that worked in the way that you'd uh, fully expect it to. Uh, and then there was a machine such as this one that was meant to handle UK currency of the time. Now, if you're not familiar with UK currency, it can all get very uh, strange. You might even think this isn't working properly. So just a quick rundown on um, UK currency of this era. It's obviously changed since decimalization, but back then when this was built, the currency worked differently. So the fundamental um, currency value was the pound. The pound was divided into 20 shillings and each shilling was divided into 12 pennies. And then it got a bit weird. You had various um, subdivisions uh, of the shillings and uh, pennies. So for example, uh, two farthings was half a penny. And that's where you'll start to see keys like this come in, where it's got a half um, symbol, so you can have uh, something and a half, uh, where the half is not 0.5, it's shown as an actual half. Um, you then had a threepence, which is three pennies, sixpence, which is six pennies, of course. Uh, that was also known as a tanner. Uh, a florin was two shillings, or a two bob bit. Uh, two shillings and sixpence was half a crown, and five shillings was a crown. So. All those, when you start looking at them and put them into the context of a machine like this, start to explain why some of the uh, results from calculations you'll get and the way some of these um, operations work uh, aren't necessarily going to be familiar to you if you've only ever dealt with decimal machines. But just bear that in mind as we go through the repair of this machine that um, there were various versions and some of them won't necessarily give you um, the exact results you might expect them to. Okay, so the first thing with this weighs an absolute ton. It's built like a tank. So this is, uh, as far as I can tell, I'm telling this out here, but I think this is a metal version. There were plastic versions and metal versions. Um, 
and um, we'll know more once we get the cover off and that's the first thing I have to do now unfortunately everything is kind of seized up I can't open the paper flap incidentally this was a printing machine uh, which is obviously very uh, good for, for back then um, but I, the knobs won't come off I can't open the top so I'm going to have to get the entire cover off but I'll do that off camera just a few screws that hold this in place and then we should be able to remove the top uh, it is motor driven as I said this is a 250 volt version um, so it'll be quite an interesting uh, machine internally the spring kind of hanging off the side here and I did find another spring sitting in the bottom of the box that this arrived in so I'm not quite sure what the internal state would be also I noticed this is way off center so I've got a feeling that um, there's something untoward going on inside this is also skewed off to one side so I think the entire machine has been kind of dropped at some point and is bent but uh, hopefully we can straighten it out so step one I'll get the cover off and we'll start taking a look inside that's the top cover removed uh, the most difficult part of getting this apart was getting this cover opened I had to open this in order to remove the two knobs um, and that was because this plunger is um, locked up it won't move at all it's supposed to be sprung loaded to act as a latch for this cover but it, uh, it just doesn't move so I'll need to free that up this part's actually plastic um, so it's quite an interesting mixture of materials the top cover itself is cast aluminium and it's quite a significant casting it's, this is how thick it is it's not just uh, a wide section at the bottom this is how thick the casting is all the way up so very substantial piece of casting there it's uh, quite impressive it's one of the things that uh, make it so heavy uh, and then onto the uh, mechanism itself so as you can see it uh, has got a printer and uh, these are kind of uh, a theme on the data wheel printer so these each of these plungers is kind of a print head in its own right uses a uh, an inked ribbon and then depending on which character is required these will raise up to the correct character and then impact on the uh, or through the ribbon onto the paper so quite interesting does actually turn although it doesn't feel right shouldn't move like that so something not quite right there not that surprising it is an old machine uh, about a hundred years old nearly and um, I think it's going to take quite a bit of work to get it up and running uh, electric motor at the back as we can see see this is a 250 volt uh, version a spare screw that's come from somewhere and the reason why we don't turn these on without taking them apart first looks like that screw may have come out of there there's, looks like there's something missing I removed the knob from this side to get the cover off but luckily it does seem to be fairly complete I can't see that there's anything missing it's uh, extremely dirty of course so it will need a really good clean and most of the levers do seem to be locked up so I will have to do some work to get all this cleaned off sitting on a big uh, rubber pad so it's quite interesting construction the calculator mechanism itself is not attached to the calculator body it sits on this rubber pad and then this rubber pad has the screw holes that mount to the uh, top cover so this is just sat kind of sitting inside the housing presumably that's to keep the noise down so it doesn't frighten the children uh, I suspect this will make quite a bit of noise when it's running um, but uh, the first job really is to get this partially um, dismantled and then to give it a really good clean it's absolutely filthy and as I've said before in previous videos uh, giving everything a good clean is always a good idea because uh, it in quite a lot of cases will allow you to see the faults that uh, need repairing before you try and run the machine up uh, like I said I'm not going to apply power to this straight off uh, until I've cleaned it and then I'll rotate it manually if we try and run it uh, on the motor uh, as it is it'll probably just self-destruct so I don't want to do that uh, we'll get it cleaned and then uh, in the next video we'll start trying to see if we can get it working